Let's talk about the moon. That bright glowing rock in the sky that just kind of hangs out doing its thing. You've seen it. You've probably howled at it once or twice, but, but here's the crazy part. For something we've been staring at since forever, we still know surprisingly little about it. Like, really? We've sent astronauts there, put flags in its dust, played golf on it, and yet it still holds on to its secrets like a grumpy old wizard with a diary. Let's start with this. The moon is exactly 400 times smaller than the sun, and exactly 400 times closer to Earth, which makes both of them appear the same size in the sky. What are the odds of that? Like, d did someone program this? Is this a cosmic coincidence? Or a weird simulation glitch? But okay, maybe you're not convinced yet. Let's get weirder. Ever heard of moonquakes? Yeah, I, like earthquakes, but on the moon. Back in the 1970s, when astronauts left seismic equipment up there, scientists found out that the moon, brace yourself, rings like a bell when hit by something. Literal quote from NASA logs. They crashed part of a spacecraft onto the surface, and the moon reverberated for almost an hour. That's not normal. That's not a thing rocks should do. Imagine dropping a brick and it echoes. For an hour. What even is that? Some people said it's hollow inside. Others said it's just the way the moon's crust is formed. And then there's that one guy on the internet who swears it's a space station from Star Wars and we're all just too blind to see it. Now let's talk about the dark side of the moon. No, not the Pink Floyd album. The actual dark side. You've probably heard that one side of the moon never faces Earth. Ever. It's just locked away like it's hiding something. Is it just plain old space dust? Or is there a moon Starbucks and a lunar colony of space raccoons planning their revenge? NASA finally got pictures of the far side in the 1960s. And, honestly, it's just more craters. <laughs> but still, the fact that it's always facing away, like it's shy or planning something suspicious, really gets the imagination going. And here's something you probably didn't know. The moon's surface is covered in a layer of dust so fine, it's like the baby powder of the cosmos. But this dust is weird, it sticks to everything. Astronauts couldn't get it off their suits, it clogged up equipment, and some even said it smelled like spent gunpowder. How does dust have a smell in a vacuum? No one knows. But apparently the moon smells like war. Or maybe barbecue. Space barbecue. Also, let's talk about the moon's origin. The leading theory is something called the Giant Impact Hypothesis, which sounds like a great name for a rock band. Basically, scientists think a Mars-sized object named Thea smashed into baby Earth, and the debris formed the moon. But there's a tiny problem. The moon and Earth have practically identical isotopic compositions. Which is weird. Because if Thea had a different origin, the moon should have some chemical differences. But nope. It's almost like the moon is a clone of Earth's crust that just decided to float away one day, like, I need space. Oh, and then there's the issue of the moon's magnetic field. Or rather, the fact that it used to have one. Billions of years ago. The moon had a magnetic field strong enough to rival Earth's, and then... It just disappeared? Like it got bored and walked off. Scientists are still arguing about how it formed in the first place. Since the moon doesn't have a molten core like Earth, it's like finding an ancient toaster and realizing it once had Wi-Fi. It makes no sense. And speaking of old things, did you know the moon is drifting away from us? Yeah. Every year it moves about 3.8 centimeters farther into space. Doesn't sound like much, but give it a few million years and we'll be squinting at a tiny dot in the sky going, Hey, remember when we had tides? Without the moon, tides would shrink, animal behaviors would shift, and the Earth's rotation would wobble like a drunken top. So, yeah, the moon might be slow walking out of our lives, but it's kind of important. And then there's all the ancient myths. Cultures across the world have treated the moon like a god, a clock, a symbol of fertility, and a giant cosmic eye watching us sleep. Some Native American tribes believed it was a protector. 
In ancient China, they said a goddess named Chang'e lives there with a jade rabbit making potions. Meanwhile, modern scientists just shrug and say, yeah, it's a rock. A weird rock. But still just a rock. Probably. So the next time you look up at the moon, just remember, it's not just a pretty circle in the sky. It's a mystery. A dusty, ancient, echoing, drifting, unpredictable mystery. And the more we learn, the more it refuses to make sense. Which, honestly, makes it even cooler. <laughs>